Now, um, when I came in, Buster was showing me this negative rake scraper that he, that he fashioned. It's really amazing. And the skew chisel doesn't have a burr on it. I hone the skew chisel. But I, I don't think it's really always a good idea, but if you need to form something quickly, it's fine. It's a really good negative rake scraper. If you don't have good steel on the skew, though, it will develop pretty quick, depending on the type of wood. But to really develop that shape of the bead, you can come in, even though it's, it's you know, using um, this portion and it's sort of a scrape, you might lift up some of the fibers. But if the skew is really sharp and the wood is reasonably thin, you can get a pretty good finish off of it. But you can go crazy sometimes trying to develop that really beautiful bead um, without that technique. But of course, the goal would be to do it, because that is the best finish. So now I would just use the skew and it's probably the quickest way to reduce it. When I first start out, I'm only using maybe half of it, but as I go down, I can get more aggressive because there's more support over by the headstock. And there's that witness mark, like I told you. Now, this, interestingly enough, this does not have to be a real tight suction fit. If anything, a lot of these things are, I, I kind of market them as two fairy boxes and ladies to put rings in them. And the idea is, the idea of the spindle is they can lift it up and drop your ear into that little box. You don't want to struggle. You don't need two hands to open this up. So if this fits a little loose, that's fine. See, I'd say that before I fit it. <laughs> <laughs> and finish will fit into it. But right now it's a tight fit. So if I wanted to work on that spindle some more, I could. Okay. I would keep some material here. Now, I watched Richard Rappin make that cut like a hundred times on the video. And it's a peeling cut. And what he does is at the end of the peeling cut, he turns it and tilts it this way so that it's not most of the long points making a cut. And it makes a really nice peeling paper cut. And I swear I must, I wore out the video tape at that time trying to figure that out. But after figuring it out, he can do it. He just has to be careful coming out of it. You can't come straight out of it. You have to pull away this way. So the base shouldn't be too thick. And I'll use my best parting tool again. Now that's obviously too thick, but I'll sneak up on it. And I do want a little room because I want to make that undercut. And this, if I went straight in, you wouldn't have the undercut on the lid. And while I'm looking at it, I'll make a sheer cut so that it kind of lifts this off the And that's a real sharp edge, but that's okay. It looks nice and crisp. That's what you want. You know, you want, you want crisp edges. And again, I'll just do this in steps. Because if you don't have to go crazy finish in the bottom, but the bottom should be finished nicely. You can jam chuck it later or something. 